The Conseil de Salle de held a public meeting last Sunday at a call NDA to share results of a survey circulated on Facebook last month. The questionnaire asked the community what they would like to see inside the Calche Cultural building. And to ask your questions, you raise your hands. After the presentation, they asked people to share their comments. Some community members questioned the validity of the survey itself. Your questionnaire or your survey was anonymous? Yes. How did you prevent people from doing multiples to skew the results? Um, unless someone went and answered in English and then went in French, you, the, the system is made so you can't go back in. Okay. So you could only do it twice? No, I did it twice on English. Yeah. Both on English? Yeah. I've heard that from other people, too, that they did it multiple times, so I'm just wondering, did you not uh, record the URL, or in future, if you do a survey, could you make sure it's not, in an, or not anonymous? If the questionnaire is questionable, according to some of these people, why not send it in the mail, numbered, so that everybody would have a chance, because I'm not on the internet, it's not my world, so that everybody could have had a questionnaire, answer it, keep a copy, even if they wanted to, but it would have been done on a household basis because it's a community endeavor. That would have been considered. The Conseil says it circulated the survey online only to cut costs, and this meeting is part of a public consultation plan. Entre autres, c'est pour ça que la, la rencontre d'aujourd'hui euh, a lieu. Euh, c'est qu'on voulait trouver divers, différentes manières, puis même dans la rencontre d'aujourd'hui, il y avait la section euh, questions-réponses où les gens pouvaient participer en parlant au micro, mais on peut participer de façon un peu plus anonyme ou à son propre rythme. En, en... Donc, on a trouvé quand même tout plein de moyens. Comme je disais, la, la, euh, comme je le disais tout à l'heure, la portion en ligne, c'était une seule étape. Et il y a plusieurs étapes, il y a plusieurs moments où on peut contribuer, où on peut collaborer, où on peut donner ses impressions, ses idées, ses commentaires. Et donc, euh, aujourd'hui, est une, une très belle étape pour ça. But according to the organization, 196 people answered the survey and about 60 attended the meeting. That's a far cry from over 3,000 people that live in Shetty Camp. Members of the council acknowledge they don't know when the project will be finished or how much more money it will cost. Most of the $2 million in funding already received have been spent on the exterior of the building. The organization says plans are still being developed and that is applying for more funding. Okay. The president of the Conseil d'État, Monique Leblanc Delaney, is asking the community for patience. Nous aussi, on est, on, on est dans la situation dans laquelle on se retrouve. C'est pas l'idéal, mais notre objectif, c'est de terminer l'édifice aussitôt que possible. Euh, on travaille sur ça, on est tous des bénévoles. On travaille fort, fort à essayer d'aller chercher de nos bailleurs de fonds les fonds nécessaires pour terminer le projet. Here's the complete meeting. I'd like to, j'aimerais souligner la présence de certains partenaires qui sont ici aujourd'hui. I'd like to welcome certain people who took the time out of their day to be here. Monsieur Keith McDonald, the CAU, CAO for la Municipalité d'Inverness, welcome. <coughs> Madame Caroline Aucoin, la spécialiste en communication et en engagement communautaire de la Municipalité d'Inverness. Monsieur Alfred Poirier, Deputy Warden, préfet adjoint de la Municipalité d'Inverness. Euh, Madame Sonia Williams, de Patrimoine Canada. Bonjour, Sonia. Euh, et Dr. Marcel Aucoin et Madame Ginette Aucoin, partenaire pour le café. Merci d'être venu. Euh, J'aimerais aussi vous rappeler qu'il y a des copies de la présentation aujourd'hui. There are copies of the presentation. If you don't have them, I could send someone with somebody like a copy who doesn't have a copy yet. Basil, pourrais-tu aller chercher une copie en anglais pour la madame? Merci. Oh, two or three copies. Merci. Euh, du, 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 du. Et j'aimerais aussi souligner la présence de mon... Euh, on, va, on va commencer la présentation. Donc, si tu veux avancer à l'ordre du jour. Merci, Basil. So, the, the presentation today will be bilingual, but not always bilingual. That's why we provided the, the PowerPoint in English. C'est pour ça qu'on vous a offert le PowerPoint en français et en anglais, parce que parfois je vais parler en français, parfois je vais parler en anglais. Puis souvent, pour vous dire la vérité, je ne sais pas quelle langue que je parle. 
Alors, si je parle trop d'une langue, s'il vous plaît, levez la main, puis je changerai, je ferai la switch. Donc, euh, on va commencer la journée avec les, les quatre premiers points, c'est surtout les présentations. Donc, la présentation du Conseil des arts de Chétiquan, la mise à jour sur le projet, les résultats de la consultation en ligne et les prochaines étapes. So, the first five points on the menu of the day will be almost all presentation mode, and then we turn into the consultation mode where we, there will be in a question period, there will be a period of questions and comments, and then a consultation participative and des échanges informel. For the people who are not comfortable to express in front of the grand group, we have put des papiers in the back where you can express your opinions and your comments in small groups to ensure that everyone so, for those who aren't comfortable expressing themselves in front of the large audience, there is also uh, an activity in the back where you will have the chance to express your views, your suggestions, and your comments on different questions that we will have for you. Okay? Any questions up to date? No questions? So I'd like to introduce the people on the panel today, les gens. Donc moi-même, Monique Leblanc de Lainey, uh, Monsieur Cyril Camus, au bout de la table, le vice-président du Conseil des Arts. M euh, Madame Jolie n'est pas ici à l'instant, la directrice générale du Conseil des Arts de Chétiquan. Monsieur Martin Théberge, le gestionnaire et consultant. Et Madame Héloïse Bayet, qui est euh, aussi, euh, fait partie de notre firme de consultants. Uh, J'aimerais aussi présenter les membres de notre CA. I'd also like to introduce the board of directors that are here today. Madame Ashley Roach Poirier, qui est en arrière. Monsieur Basil Doucette. Monsieur Jaron Felix. Madame Denise Timmons. Um, Shelly Leblanc. Et ceux qui ne sont pas encore ici, il y a Céline Poirier, Louise Aucoin, Liliane Cormier. Et puis, il y a les deux membres euh, de la Société Saint-Pierre qui nous aident beaucoup, 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 Mme Lisette Bourgeois et M. Jérémy Poirier. Merci d'être là. Thank you for being there. Ça fait que, I will now pass the mic over to M. Cyril Camus. Bonjour. Alors, juste peut-être, euh, je sais que la majorité des gens, peut-être, savent, nous connaissent, connaissent à cause des arts un peu, mais... Je pense que c'est quand même bon de faire un survol. So, for most of you, you may know of the Arts Council, le Conseil des Arts, but it's still good to go over uh, some of the history and basic uh, statement of mission and vision for l'organisation. Alors, l'organisation a été fondée en 1999. Vraiment, sa mission, c'était d'épanouir la langue française et préserver le riche patrimoine d'expression de la région de Chétiquan, tout en entamant des projets et actions ayant pour but de développer du vu le développement artistique des jeunes acadiens et ensemble de la communauté. Alors ça, ça serait important de garder la mission du Conseil des arts tout au long de la présentation parce que parfois on nous pose des choses ou on, on suppose certaines choses, mais le, notre mission, il faut toujours respecter la mission de l'organisme. So the mission is, is great to keep in mind throughout the presentation today because that guides our daily activities and our long-term goals as well. So, Please keep that, keep, that in, keep that in mind, particularly when we see some of the results of the survey. Quand vous regardez les résultats de sondage, il parle des liens avec la mission ou moins de liens. Aussi, euh, le Conseil des arts fournit à ses membres, au public et à la population scolaire un programme d'animation, de diffusion et de formation artistique de, de qualité. Alors vraiment, on essaie de, comme conseil d'avoir des spectacles ici, de produire des... Et pas seulement dans, dans la langue française, dans la langue anglaise, on a plein d'exemples, on a eu des productions en langue français et aussi en anglais, Celtic Colors par exemple, beaucoup de, de différentes présentations. Quelques activités, les ateliers de formation en pièces de théâtre, soins du soir, patrie, patronnariat scolaire, patronnariat avec Celtic Colors, marché du fermier, etc. Et on, la liste aurait été très longue si on, si on était pour toutes les euh, énumérer. Alors, juste garder en tête la mission tout au long pour juste voir comme qu est -ce, comment est-ce que nos activités et nos projets s'alignent avec la mission. Ça, c'est important. 
So the links between our, our activities and goals and our mission is great, is good to keep in mind throughout the presentation. Um, now we're going to go over special, uh, specifically the project of the Quartier Culturel. So we're going to talk about specifically the Quartier Culturel, a bit historic, where we've been, and where we're going. That's really what the goal of this presentation is today: the consultation of the Quartier Culturel. So, we know that in 2012 we started research for faire la rénovation de TA. Alors on a commencé à faire des sondages, euh, consulter la communauté. En 2014, il y a eu un développement d'un plan d'affaires par, euh, par Common Good Solution, la, la ferme de consultation, puis les membres de la communauté, d'entrepreneurs et différents représentants du gouvernement ont été, étaient à la table pour discuter comment est-ce qu'on pourrait faire avancer la mission du Conseil des arts. En 2016, il y a eu une étude de faisabilité. Est-ce que c'était possible de réaliser notre projet ou le projet. En 2017 et 2000, en, en, en 2017 et 18, il y a eu la construction externe ou extérieure de l'édifice que tout le monde peut voir en passant. Et en novembre 2018, il y a eu une porte ouverte pour le public à poser des questions. So a little bit of the history in terms of what was done. There was research done. There was a consultation firm hired to talk to the community, government, and other partners to see what is what we could do to advance the uh, interest of the Conseil des Arts, there was a feasibility study, and then in 2017 and 18, the construction of the uh, Quartier Culturel as we now know it, and then in November there was an open public meeting to have question consultation type of meeting, and of course, today. Um, just peut-être pour encadrer, on a, quand on a reçu les, des fonds pour bâtir, on avait patrimoine contribué, euh, les patrimoines de canadiens qui ont contribué à peu, à peu près 470 000 dollars, la PECA 500, la province, vous allez dire, environ 500 000. Alors ça, c'est les argent que l'on avait reçu pour faire euh, la, euh, la construction extérieure. So roughly, uh, from... Uh, ouais. Uh, la municipalité avait donné la somme de 150 000, la municipalité 150 000, CSAP 475 000, CSAP 475 000, uh, others through uh, uh, sponsorship or old community, 11 000, environ 11 000 dollars, c'est un total de environ 2 millions de dollars, 2 millions, 14 000, quelque chose. Les, les, la construction a coûté environ 1 million, 900, presque 2 millions, frais de la gestion, les frais administratifs, 11 000, les frais de finance, la comptabilité, tout ça, à peu près 2 millions. C'est à peu près ça qu'on a dépensé jusqu'à date pour la construction de qu'est-ce qu'on voit à l'extérieur. So, if we put all the revenues in terms of Patrimoine Canada, 470, uh, 470,000, APK, 500,000, province, 400,000, municipality, 150,000, CSAP, 475,000, all uh, funds for a total of slightly over $2 million, $2,014,000. And our expenses, the construction itself, consume most, almost all of it, almost to $2 million, a bit of a min fees, uh, $11,000, and our fees for the accounting and so forth, roughly $21,000. So at this point, we are $2 million invested. So what we see outside, and of course what we see with the naked eye is one thing, but there's also infrastructure work that we don't see that's below ground that actually has been spent uh, in order to build the building. So that is included in the construction cost that may not be visible, but still are a significant part of the actual construction. And for most of us, we're aware when we build things, there are things that we do not see that do cost. Alors, il y a des cours, il y a des infrastructures qui ont été développées, mis en place, que peut-être qu'on voit pas, mais qui est une partie importante de la force de la construction. Alors, en gros, on a investi 2 millions jusqu'à date à la construction de qu'est-ce qu'on voit, euh, mettre l'infrastructure en place et tout ça. Puis c'est ça au point où ce qu'on est rendu à, au niveau des finances. Donc, ça nous amène un peu dans les, dans les dernières années. Depuis, il y avait eu porte ouverte en 2018. Depuis ce temps-là, on est beaucoup en mode planification, révision, ajustement euh, pour finaliser euh, la construction. Donc, 
au printemps, c'est à ce moment-là, donc printemps 2019, l'année dernière, euh, c'est à ce moment-là où moi j'ai été euh, embauché, où j'ai embarqué sur le dossier. On a commencé à, à essayer de planifier le plan d'opérationnalisation de bord. Une fois qu'on est ouvert, comment, comment ça pourrait marcher tout ça, puis qu que, comment on le ferait vivre tout ça. Euh, et puis en même temps, on a commencé à planifier toute la question de demande de subvention. Donc, on a fait des demandes de subvention euh, à, euh, entre autres, patrimoine canadien, à la PECA, euh, et donc on poursuit à ce niveau-là. Et euh, pendant l'hiver, donc février principalement, vous avez eu la consultation communautaire en ligne, je reviens avec les résultats dans quelques minutes, mais une consultation qui a très bien été euh, répondue. Vous avez été généreux avec vos réponses, on, on a beaucoup apprécié. Et ça nous amène tout ça à aujourd'hui, où on poursuit cette consultation-là pour s'assurer de bien comprendre, bien savoir euh, la communauté. On avait, on avait fait des consultations, comme Cyril l'a dit, au début dans l'étude de faisabilité, mais ça fait déjà un petit bout de temps de ça. Donc, on veut s'assurer que le projet est toujours en lien avec ce que la communauté veut, que le projet répond toujours aux besoins euh, et euh, aux volontés de la communauté. Euh, et donc, ben, je pense que c'est le temps. Euh, de parler des résultats de la consultation en ligne. Avant de, de vous en parler, euh, en fait, on va commencer par les résultats, puis après ça, vous avez, comme euh, Monique le disait, vous aurez l'occasion de, de, de parler, de poser des questions, tout ça. Mais je pense que les résultats sont, euh, sont importants de, de, euh, pour bien mettre la table. Euh, le sondage pour lequel je vous présente les résultats a été administré dans la communauté en utilisant les médias sociaux et il y avait officiellement 10 jours, donc du 9 au 19 février pour y répondre. Il y a une couple de personnes qui ont répondu après. Ce n'est pas, pas un « cut-off strip », on va prendre vos réponses pareilles. Euh, C'est toutes des bonnes informations. Donc, au total, on arrive à, dans, si on prend les 10 jours, on arrive à 196 réponses. Euh, donc, on pouvait répondre en français et en anglais. On a eu 34 réponses en anglais, 162 en français. Comme je vous disais, c'était très, très généreux. Euh, il y avait une variété de gens qui ont répondu, principalement 19 à 65 ans. Et euh, ce qui a fait qu'on trouvait très intéressant, c'est que 81 des répondants connaissaient déjà le, le, le projet du quartier culturel. Euh, donc, la raison pour qu'on trouve ça intéressant, c'est qu'en général, la communauté connaît le projet et donc on n'avait pas besoin de faire d'introduction ou de recommencer à zéro. Euh, si on regarde toujours dans les résultats, euh, des presque 200 répondants, il y avait 76 des répondants qui sont favorables ou neutres au projet. Donc, euh, ça semble être un bon support et vous voyez là dans les statistiques que, euh, en fait, que ce soit francophone ou anglophone, la statistique est à peu près la même. Les gens sont, sont favorables ou neutres envers le projet et il y a euh, un peu moins de 25 de la population qui sont plus ou moins négatifs par rapport au projet. Uh, so overall, those results between uh, almost 200 respondents and the fact that 76% of the respondents, both in French and in English, seem to or say that they support or they feel uh, neutral about the project, we saw that uh, from a very good eye. Those, toujours dans les résultats, um, on a posé deux questions différentes. Donc, il y avait uh, la première question qui était euh, « Quels sont les besoins de la communauté? » Puis il y avait une autre question euh, qui, qui, qui allait dans le même sens, mais qui disait « Qu'est-ce qui pourrait être incorporé ou qu'est-ce qui devrait être incorporé dans le quartier culturel? » On a pris les résultats de ces deux réponses-là, puis on les a amalgamées, sachant que ça allait dans, dans le même sens. Et là, on a, sur la diapositive, vous voyez les principaux. Euh, et, et, puis quand je dis qu'on a amalgamé les résultats, on a amalgamé non seulement les, les choix qui ont été cochés, mais on a aussi pris tous les commentaires qui ont été ajoutés. Parce qu'il y a des gens qui ne cochaient peut-être pas, euh, par exemple, bibliothèque, mais qui parlaient d'activités pour avoir accès à des livres dans les commentaires. Bien, on, a, on a combiné ça. Ce que ça nous donne, euh, c'est les résultats que vous avez euh, à l'écran. Uh, so those are the priorities that were expressed in the um, uh, online consultation. Il n'y avait pas de questions par rapport au café à ce point-ci parce que uh, on considérait que c'était déjà quelque chose de confirmé parce qu'il y a déjà des ententes en cours à ce niveau-là. Uh, mais même si le café n'était pas une des options, uh, il y a énormément de commentaires qui ont ressorti uh, par rapport au café. Uh, il y a des gens. Uh, 
ont, qui ont même été jusqu'à dire ce qu'ils pensent qu'il devrait y avoir à l'intérieur du café, puis ça, on y revient plus tard. Um, statistique très intéressante euh, aussi, euh, lorsqu'on regardait, une des questions qu'on vous posait, c'est euh, à quelle fréquence, à, how often would you use those spaces? Um, donc, on a posé cette question-là, puis ce qu'on remarque, c'est que 74 des gens utiliseraient le café au moins une fois par mois, puis 36 l'utiliseraient au moins une fois par semaine. Donc, c'est quand même des, des, des fortes statistiques. Euh, il y a 60 des gens qui disent qu'ils utiliseraient la bibliothèque au moins une fois par mois, puis 20 des gens qui utiliseraient au moins une fois par semaine. Euh, et puis 20 des gens qui utiliseraient la galerie d'art au moins une fois par mois. Au, au global, puis vous voyez, il y en a qui sont euh, plus foncés. C'est des statistiques qu'on voit d'un très, très bon oeil. On voit qu'il y a un engagement. On voit que les gens, non seulement disent qu'ils le veulent dans la réponse précédente, mais ils l'utiliseraient. Donc ça, we see that as very interesting, that not only people say that we need that in the community, but if we do have it, I will use it. So that's very interesting to us. Um, puis surtout si on regarde pour la galerie d'art, j'ai fait un peu de recherche et, et, et euh, j'ai trouvé des statistiques de 2015 qui ont été compilées par Patrimoine canadien. Et si on regarde pour les galeries d'art, euh, si on prend tous les citoyens de la Nouvelle-Écosse, donc sans, sans faire euh, de, de... si on se base sur la, la population totale, donc pas par tranche d'âge, mais euh, le citoyen moyen en Nouvelle-Écosse visite une galerie d'art. On ne parle pas de musée, mais ici on parle vraiment de galerie d'art. Mais le citoyen moyen en Nouvelle-Écosse euh, dit visiter un musée une fois ou douze ans. Alors qu'ici, dans vos statistiques, dans vos réponses, il euh, y a au moins deux personnes qui ont dit « moi je vais y aller à tous les jours » ou à peu près. Il y a 3%, donc à peu près six personnes qui disent « je vais y aller une à trois fois par semaine ». Donc ça démontre euh, qu'il y a un grand intérêt dans la communauté pour une galerie d'art, beaucoup plus grand que la moyenne provinciale, où j'ai regardé la moyenne nationale, qui est un peu plus haute que pour la Nouvelle-Écosse. Mais quand même, ça c'est très très intéressant. Puis, je me permets le petit commentaire éditorial personnel. On a toujours su que Chétican euh, est une communauté où la culture vit euh, fortement, la culture est vibrante, puis ce genre de statistiques-là vient prouver. So what I was saying is that uh, if you look at uh, statistics that were compiled by Canadian Heritage, um, the results of the survey are, are way, way above the provincial or national average for uh, people that visit art galleries, not museums, specifically art galleries. Uh, and, and that seems to be very interesting to us and, and it proves what we've always known that Shetty Camp is, is a community where, where culture is very vibrant and, and that just proves it and, and it shows that an art gallery uh, could be well attended in the community. Um, on a aussi sondé dans le, uh, notre questionnaire les gens d'affaires ou les représentants d'organismes de la communauté et donc sur les 196 personnes, il y a 32% qui sont des entrepreneurs ou des gérants, gérants d'organismes. Um, et de, euh, de ceux-là, il y a 42 qui disent « Moi, je suis intéressé par la location de bureaux euh, à plus ou moins long terme. » Donc, court terme, ici, on parle une journée, une semaine. Euh, ça peut être plusieurs fois dans l'année. Moyen terme, on parle quelques semaines, quelques mois. Puis à long terme, on parle un an ou plus. Donc, il y a quand même une belle proportion de gens là-dedans qui disent « On est intéressé par un bureau. » Mais en plus de ça, puis c'est pas sur la... la diapositive, mais euh, il y a plusieurs gens qui ont répondu aussi à ça en disant « ben si je loue un bureau, je m'attends aussi à avoir des services, par exemple, impression, photocopie, internet et tout ça. Um, » So, a lot of people are saying that they would be interested in an office rental, uh, at more or less long term, but also uh, interested in other services such as internet and, and uh, printing and copying. Um, et, et ces gens-là sont aussi intéressés par la location de, uh, de salles de réunion, que ce soit à court terme, uh, pardon, que ce soit des petits groupes, des, des plus gros groupes, et, et à différence qui varie beaucoup. En général, c'est pour des groupes de, les, les, les statistiques les plus fortes, c'est pour des groupes de 25 pour, de personnes et moins, puis ça varie beaucoup, mais le, le, principalement on dit une à douze fois par année. 
Donc, ça démontre bien qu'il y a un besoin et qu'il y a un intérêt pour des euh, salles de réunion en plus des bureaux. So it was very clear that uh, meeting rooms are also a, a strong need uh, for groups of 25 people or more was, was more importantly and one to 12 times a year depending on the respondents seem to be the, uh, the main use of meeting rooms. Et finalement, um, peut-être, there we go. Euh, donc, finalement, il y a trois grands commentaires qui sont si ressortis. D'abord, il ne faudrait pas que le Conseil des arts de Chétiquan commence à trop faire de compétition dans la communauté. If, if the mandate is to foster the development of the community, the art Conseil des arts shouldn't be competing with local businesses. And that we heard that strongly. Um, L'autre chose qu'on a entendu, uh, c'est qu'en uh, plus de l'espace, en plus de la, de la, de la, du building, en plus du physique, du, du béton, bien, on veut que cet espace-là soit vivant. Donc, il doit y avoir une programmation à l'intérieur, on doit le faire vivre, cet espace-là. And, and that goes beyond just uh, the building, it goes beyond the, the, the concrete and, and, uh, and windows. It, it's all about the programming of the building, and we heard a lot of comments about that, and, and we'll talk about it uh, again in the future. And, and the third comment is, a question of communications. There, a lot of people said we want we want to know more. We want to be kept informed about the the project. Et, et donc au niveau des communications, il y a plusieurs personnes qui ont fait des commentaires. Et à ce niveau-là, on en a parlé beaucoup. Euh, Moril et Moril. Ça c'est Monique et Cyril assemblés. Ça, ça donne Moril. <rire> euh, Monique et Cyril et, et euh, Héloïse et moi, on en a parlé beaucoup. Puis le Conseil des Arts s'engage à mettre un post Facebook au minimum une fois par mois dans le futur pour garder la communauté informée sur les avancées du projet. Donc les, comment les choses vont et tout ça. Euh, donc ça c'est un engagement qu'on fait, mais on aura l'occasion de reparler de communication là, dans. Euh, l'autre partie de la consultation. Maintenant, rapidement, euh, pour les prochaines étapes, euh, mais avant de, de parler des prochaines étapes, je, je, je sais déjà d'emblée qu'il y a tout plein de gens qui veulent savoir combien ça va coûter, puis qui veulent savoir quand est-ce que ça va ouvrir cette affaire-là. Euh, on est conscient que vous voulez le savoir, puis nous autres, on aimerait ça vous le dire, mais c'est impossible pour nous de répondre à cette question-là, pour toutes sortes de raisons. Premièrement, euh, une des raisons pourquoi on vous consulte, c'est qu'on veut s'assurer que le projet va bien. S'il y a des changements à faire, bien, il va falloir revenir à la table à dessin, puis je parle littéralement, parce qu'il faut peut-être parler à, à, aux architectes de nouveau, puis ça change peut-être le projet. Il faut aussi, selon les, les demandes, naturellement, il, mais pas juste selon les demandes, pour poursuivre, il faut aussi discuter avec les bailleurs de fonds. Euh, c'est des choses qui doivent arriver. Euh, et euh, il y a aussi toute la question de... Il y, a, il y a une partie du financement qui doit provenir de la communauté, j'en reparlerai plus tard, mais tout ça fait qu'il y a des délais de financement qu'on ne contrôle pas, qu'il y a des délais... Tu sais, on pourrait appeler la compagnie de construction demain matin puis dire « on est prêt », puis eux autres pourraient nous répondre « oui, mais nous, on est sur un gros projet présentement, on va être prêt juste dans deux mois. Tu » sais. Donc, il y a tout plein de choses qu'on ne contrôle pas, puis on ne voulait pas non plus se mettre quelque chose... Euh, d'obligatoire avant de vous avoir parlé, ce qui fait qu'on n'a pas encore réponse à cette question-là, mais on est engagé à vous communiquer la réponse dès qu'on l'aura. Um, so before I go into the next steps, what I was saying is it's important to understand that we can't answer the question of how much it's going to cost, and we can't answer the question of, of when it's going to open, uh, because we're still working on that, and we're consulting the community today to make sure that we we do it right and we have the proper things inside the building. And that may include uh, changing uh, things, it may include having to go back to the, the building company, uh, it needs to be negotiated or, or grant applications need to be done, and because of that there's there's a lot of factors that we don't have the control of and, and that could impact both the timeline and the budget of the project. So um, it's important to keep that in mind uh, when I talk about the next steps. Et, et les, les prochaines étapes, c'est de façon très, très large et globale, sauf les deux dernières, les, les autres qui précèdent, donc les trois premières, en fait, euh, ce n'est pas une question de priorité. On ne va pas euh, les faire nécessairement dans l'ordre. Elles peuvent être faites toutes les trois en même temps. Euh, un peu, donc, c'est flexible, puis ce n'est pas écrit sur la diapositive. Naturellement, on ne peut pas ouvrir avant d'avoir euh, fini la construction, ça, vous le comprenez bien. Je, mais... Euh, ce que je veux dire, c'est que ce n'est pas, pas dans un ordre de priorité que c'est écrit sur la diapositive. 
Donc, nous, on, on doit d'abord terminer un travail de rassembler vos, vos commentaires. On doit aussi faire beaucoup de travail au niveau du financement. Puis, on, est, on a déjà commencé des discussions avec des bailleurs de fonds. Euh, on a des demandes de subventions qui sont dans euh, le système présentement. Euh, il y a un comité de levée de fonds qui, qui existe déjà. Donc, tout ça, ça doit se poursuivre, se poursuivre toute la question de financement. Mais il y a aussi toute la question des ententes euh, qui doivent être faites. Entente, finaliser des ententes pour le café, pour la bibliothèque, s'il y a une bibliothèque, et ainsi de suite. Euh, mais aussi, quand on parle de programmation, de faire vivre l'espace, il y a tout plein d'autres ententes communautaires qui pourraient exister pour assurer qu'on a les activités que l'on veut à l'intérieur de l'édifice. Donc ça, ça va faire partie euh, des prochaines étapes. Um, so, the, the three first ones uh, will, can happen all at the same time and, and, and parallel to one another. Um, so, first of all, we need to uh, finalize your, um, the consultation and, and, and decide on exactly what's going to be done. We need to do a lot of work on funding and we need to uh, negotiate and sign agreements with a bunch of partners. For example, uh, the cafe, uh, many have talked about the library, but also when I was saying earlier that it's good to have the space, the concrete space, but we need to have activities inside that space. There could be a lot of community agreements that are uh, concluded, that are signed in order to uh, provide activities in, in the space. So we'll be working on that all together and, and many discussions have happened already uh, for those first three um, elements. The last two elements are pretty straightforward. We need to finish the construction and then we need to open. And we're excited to do that. Donc les deux dernières, très simple. On doit terminer la construction, puis uh, on doit ouvrir, et puis ça, on a, on a vraiment hâte de faire. Maintenant, il y a, uh, je vous invite à tour de rôle, en levant la main, vous pouvez poser des questions, vous pouvez faire des commentaires, ça nous fait plaisir. Ma collègue Héloïse est là, elle prend des notes euh, et euh, on va s'assurer d'effectuer tous les suivis. On va essayer de répondre autant de questions que possible. Je vous invite, comme je disais, à lever la main. Euh, puis, euh, la sonorité dans la salle est, est très bonne, mais il y a des micros qui sont disponibles aussi s'il y a des gens qui, qui doivent ou qui veulent utiliser les micros. Um, je, je vais aussi répéter, comme Monique l'a dit au début, qu'il y a d'autres façons de participer. Il y a des gens qui aiment euh, utiliser le micro, qui sont à l'aise à utiliser le micro, il y en a qui le sont moins. Et, et cette consultation-là, c'est important pour nous de la faire de toutes sortes de manières. Donc, il y aura une activité dans le corridor à la sortie qu'on vous invitera à partager. Euh, mais je vous invite aussi à aller voir les membres du conseil d'administration, aller voir Cyril, Monique, Héloïse ou moi, et nous on va s'assurer de rapporter tous ces commentaires-là. Donc vous n'êtes pas obligé, vous êtes les bienvenus, mais vous n'êtes pas obligé de faire le commentaire nécessairement maintenant au micro. So there's many ways to um, uh, participate in this consultation. Right now we're entering into the question and comment period. Uh, you're invited to make your comments uh, and, and to ask your questions. You raise your hands and we'll take you in terms. Uh, we have microphones if, if need be, but there's other activities that will happen uh, outside in the hallway. We have uh, uh, a way for you to participate. So don't feel like you have to speak and if you don't speak, Uh, right now, if we won't hear your comments, I also invite you to talk to the uh, board of directors uh, members uh, after the meeting if you, if you need be, and we'll make sure that all your comments and your questions are, are uh, brought back to us. Donc, est-ce qu'il y a des questions? Oui. Uh, we can definitely do that. Um, so it's a, it's a two-story space uh, with, a, uh, with a staircase, I was going to say in the middle, but it's off to one side. Uh, the front on the ground level has uh, windows, uh, and on the upper uh, level, it's a, a bigger space. Uh, do you want the measurements and everything? I, I have the plan, so I'll invite you to come and see us after, and I'll, I'll give, provide you with all of that. And we're after for those who are interested. We're going to take the people to see the building. So maybe by the visual might be a little easier than arbitrary figures. It's kind of hard to see. It's easier to discuss how you're going to use the space for you and Definitely. No, we'll, we'll invite everyone after. We'll guide them if you want to see the building. For what you can see, our cars are not, not very accessible yet, just because it's the shell. But at least it'll give you a global perspective and better see how it looks from the inside. Yeah. 
your questionnaire or your survey was anonymous? Yes. How did you prevent people from doing multiples to skew the results? Um, unless someone went and answered in English and then went in French, you the, the system is made so you can't go back in. Okay. So you could only do it twice. No, I did it twice on English. Yeah. Both on English? Yeah. It I I've heard that from other people too that they did it multiple times. So I'm just wondering, did you not um, record the URL or in future if you do a survey, could you make sure it's not in an, or not anonymous so that it, it should have been done, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. I will. Uh, I, I do have access to the URLs, so I will go double check and make sure that there is no, not too many multiples. And if there are, we'll take them out of the statistics. We'll review our statistics in function of that. Thank you for mentioning it. How many would be available for rental and the square footage? Yeah, we know, we, we, the question was, do we know the actual square footage? And do we know the actual square footage design for every function? The question to the first is yes, of course, we know the square footage of both floors. Uh, total, we also know the functional space, because stairwell, consumed space, and so forth. Uh, some of the, when we have, when the Corset Design made their first request, for funding from the different partners, some of the rooms have had to be defined clearly in terms of space, location, and so forth. So those, yes, we know the actual spacing. Some other spaces, because they weren't confirmed at the time of construction, or weren't confirmed in terms of, yes, we want to be there, there, there is some flexibility to the actual square footage and possible design. So for example, in this round of consultation, we, uh, we received the information that uh, functional workrooms might be a good idea that was talked about in the initial phase, but this came again in a different way, so we might be able to see uh, if different space could be allotted for allowing what I call temporary workspace, a day or so, whatever. So this consultation will allow us to go back to the plans, see what space have been mandated that we cannot choose, we cannot change because that's part of the initial uh, plans, but there are some flexibility uh, still in some area. So the answer is yes. Some, some I can tell you exactly that would be a 1,200 foot space or a 14, a 400 foot square foot space, but it will not be for every designation because some partners are still not sure what they are requiring from us as well. So there is some building flexibility. In the original plans, and, and we want to make sure to it's important to remember that we're still flexible on that and, and that's why we're consulting, but if we look at the original plans, uh, the uh, library would have been about 850 square feet. The cafe was about 700 square feet. Um, there was three office spaces that were between 100 and 250 square feet. Uh, we have the conference rooms all together was uh, just over 4,000 square feet. Um, and an art gallery that was about 500 square feet. So if we look at, for example, the, um, uh, the, um, the banquet hall, um, which is over 4,000 uh, 4, square feet, that would be a banquet hall for about 260, up to 260 people, just to give you an idea. I saw someone over here first. Okay. J'avais une question se concernant le marché d'été, le marché du village. Qu'est-ce que vous avez pensé? Est-ce qu'il continue à faire ça dehors? On fait ça en dedans? Est-ce qu'on suspend? J'ai aussi une suggestion, c'est qu'en parlant d'une galerie, un café, puis euh, un autre espace, d'essayer de, de voir si ça serait possible d'avoir des espaces le plus ouverts possible ou ce que, qui serait invitant pour les, les visiteurs l'été pour qu'il y ait accès facilement à, à ces trois affaires-là, la bibliothèque, je ne sais pas, là, mais... Mm -hmm. Pour ce qui est de, de l'espace ouvert, on prend, on prend bonne note. Pour ce qui est du marché fermier, euh, le plan est que le marché fermier demeure à l'extérieur. 
Mais euh, naturellement, il y, a, il y a quelques personnes qui ont fait le commentaire sur le sondage euh, qui euh, nous disaient que euh, ça pourrait aller à l'intérieur. Puis on, on a bien entendu ce commentaire-là par rapport à la flexibilité que d'avoir, par exemple, les, les salles de rencontre qui pourraient euh, doubler pour le marché fermier euh, au moment où le, le, la température est moins clémente. On a entendu ces commentaires-là aussi, puis on, on, on l'inclut dans notre évaluation pour les prochaines étapes. Yes. Uh, so there, there was two, two elements. One was a question about the farmer's market, and the second one was about a comment saying that, that try to make the spaces as, as open uh, and, and, pardon my expression, but as flowy as possible. Um, and, and so the, my response was that, of course, as open as possible, we're, we're keeping that in mind. It's, it, it's noted. And about the farmer's market, it is not planned that the farmers would move automatically inside the farmers market would, would remain outside but we did receive comments in the survey uh, that says that uh, we uh, it, the, the space that we have gives us flexibility and it could allow us to bring the uh, farmers market inside if the weather is is not as as we wish it would be sometimes so we're, we're keeping that comments in, in as part of our evaluation for the next steps Sylvia Lelievre, Chetikan. Uh, the, what I'm asking is if the questionnaire is questionable, according to some of these people, why not send it in the mail, numbered, so that everybody would have a chance, because I'm not on the internet, it's not my world, so, so that everybody could have had a questionnaire, answer it, keep a copy even if they wanted to, but it would have been done on a household basis because it's a community endeavor. That would have been considered. C'est noté, merci. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions, commentaires? Or I, I think that je crois que quelque chose comme ça, ça serait plutôt un comité qui travaille ensemble pour s'assurer de rejoindre les besoins de la communauté de la même façon que n'importe quel espace qu'on va voir dans, la, dans, dans le quartier culturel, que ce soit le marché des fermiers, que ce soit euh, la position, si c'est toujours possible d'avoir la bibliothèque, un comité, to have a committee to discuss how they want these spaces to be utilized because they belong to the community. Any other questions uh, or comments? Yeah. Yes. Uh, did you consider a space that could be rented uh, by an artisan or, or more uh, for special occasion or for periodic uh, rental? Uh, in the initial plans, uh, there was a space reserved for what we call uh, maker space where an artist could come in for a period of time and actually show to the community how they proceed to do their artistic work and, and so forth. So we would have spaces possibly uh, uh, available at different times of the year because we have to coordinate what is also happening at what time of the year. because. If you look at our tourist season, they tend to occur mostly from, I would say, late May probably or to late September. So in the building, there is the possibility of making that space available. We actually were discussing that over the last few months because that maker space was really designed for artists to come in and show how they do their work uh, and how they actually, not only the production, but just how people can sometimes come in and participate in that production. So if you know during, for example, during Cultic Colors, we have sessions where people come in and learn how to play certain instruments and so forth. So that could be a similar style in that particular room, in that particular area. So it could not, maybe it's, it won't be available one weekend because something is going on that weekend, then the rest of the week would be open for people to come in. So once again, almost like a Galerie Dahl, we'd have to entertain who wants to come in, what kind of artists, what kind of artists want to show and the product that they're looking for for the community. 
and then make a selection of different characters. Maybe for five days, it will be a, a certain group or person, and there are five. And then there are five days, someone else. But that is certainly uh, being discussed now at, our, at the planification stage, because it seems to be a need in the community. And something that's interesting, dans la consultation, so many wonderful ideas came up. Uh, things that we hadn't thought of yet, like uh, the flexible use of office space where visitors could come and net network among themselves. So this came from the younger generation of entrepreneurs that I hadn't thought of that because I'm a teacher and I don't need to be thinking about these things. When I travel, I just want to go to the beach. So, so this is why it's important. La consultation, if you answered it once or if you answered it twice, you came up with new ideas because I have skimmed through the questionnaire and all the answers with a fine tooth comb and I have not seen two identical answers. So if you did take the time to do it twice, it's because you had something extra to say and I appreciate that. Yes, Velvet. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having us here because we really need the information. I can't hear you. I'm the one who can't hear you. First of all, thank you for having us because We've been wondering, people have had questions, and the information uh, session is a good idea. But I'd like to go back to what Sylvia mentioned, in that redoing the questionnaire, you would get a more comprehensive uh, idea. It's not just that it was online. Um, initially, we could only source it in French. Someone went looking for it in English and then got it to us. Someone else, actually, several people, did answer it a couple times, and then uh, had some problem with it and tried to contact, I guess it was your firm that set up the survey, mm -hmm. and I couldn't contact you to get an answer for some reason. Um, so I think you, you might get an even better idea if it will run again in a more comprehensive manner. Thank you. I, I understand the comments, and, and again, I'm, I'm sorry if there was uh, there was mistakes in that sense. But I want to highlight that that was one step, and today's another step, and it's it's not the last step. Um, and, and one thing that's important, and I'll, I'll come back to the art space as an example. But on outside of the building, there's some elements that came not outside of the building, sorry, outside of the uh, theater hall. Uh, in the hallway. There's questions that we've put on the walls and that we want you to answer because there are some things that either we got so many comments and, and it's it's still unclear and we don't want to decide and we want more feedback from the community. And there's other things, like I said earlier, there's many comments that we heard uh, that uh, were not regarding the building itself, but how we make it live, how we uh, program inside the building. And we want to hear from you and, and, and that's why this is step two and it's not the last step either. So regarding the art space, it's, it's a, it's a great example of that. Many people talked about um, uh, presentation, many people talked about creation, and, and those are two different spectrums on the arts presenting. Uh, and, and so we got so many comments that we're now questioning what's ideal. Is there, it can both be done. Can we have a, a, a more intimate black box style, as an example, uh, an intimate black box style theater for a show with 20 people, but at the same time keep another space, for example, remove an office space to put uh, art studios in there. Like, we're, we're questioning all that ourselves and we want to make sure to get as much feedback from you guys, and that's why it's important to participate in the next step of today uh, in the hallway. We have five, I'll say six questions, five questions plus a, a, a what I call the ideas parking lot, where if, if it hasn't been answered or discussed, you can put it in the ideas parking lot and we'll make sure to address it some, somehow, whether it's through a different survey, whether, whether it's a, a conversation with uh, specific people or whatnot. But we, we're, we, we very welcome all those comments and those questions and I, I thank you again for your question. Uh, this might be a bit more um, specific uh, spatial programming uh, comment, but I just wanted to say, I, I'm the uh, director for the Cabot Trail Writers Festival and we would love to bring more uh, literary programming and francophone programming to this community. And uh, so in terms of the library component of the space, uh, if that in itself could be developed to be 
you know, a dynamic community space in and of itself, so that it's more as libraries often are these days, but more than a repository of books, but a, but a vital dynamic community space where events of different uh, sizes and scales and scopes could be held. We would, we would be really delighted to partner with programming for that space. Did I hear correctly you said the Cabot Trail Writers Festival? That's right. I need about 12 copies of your business card, please. <laughs> sure. Donc c'est le, le festival des auteurs du Cabot Trail qui nous disait qu'il y, y a plusieurs opportunités de partenariat qui sont très intéressées. Je pense que c'est exactement le genre de partenariat qu'on qu veut discuter euh, puis aller de l'avant avec pour, euh, pour le, la programmation à l'intérieur. C'est formidable. Merci. Je pense qu'une chose, une chose qui est importante de noter, c'est que même dans la première consultation et même la deuxième consultation et des rencontres, un mot qui est sorti souvent, c'est le mot « flexible ». avoir des espaces avoir des espaces qui sont flexibles pour répondre aux différents besoins de la communauté. Puis, parfois, c'est la terminologie qu'on sert pour décrire, par exemple, le mot « bibliothèque ». Je suis certain que je pourrais demander à 10, 10 différentes personnes qu'est-ce qu'ils reprennent, qu'est-ce qu'eux conçoivent par une bibliothèque, puis il y aura des réponses très différentes. Parce que ma notion d'une bibliothèque va pas nécessairement la notion de mes parents, mais des enfants. Parce que c'est juste différent à différents endroits. So I think one of the things that the first consultation, second, and discussion we've had with many, many partners, flexibility is key. We have to have a room that is flexible to meet many needs in our community. But as soon as we talk about flexibility, one of the things that it requires is cooperation. So everybody can't have their, okay, their activity on a Friday night from six to eight, it's just impossible. So that type of coordination requires a bit of cooperation from everyone and also creativity on some sides. So the flexibility of being able to use rooms is essential for the survival of any, any, any structure that are in communities now. So if you look at modern development, whether it's rural, a city, they are really looking at having multiple functions within a physical structure. So I think your idea is very, very well uh, stated, and I think it's something we've discussed at our level, whereby we've, we've seen spaces, a 20 by 30 room, that's mainly designed for a purpose. But is it possible to bring other activities where, when those rooms aren't being used, so that we have a maximum usage from our community? That's the key. So, and most buildings, public, you know, now they're really looking at that, especially education buildings and other types of buildings whereby doors aren't closed for a significant amount of time, but are open to the community to use. But again, that involves cost, uh, cooperation, flexibility, volunteers to sometimes run those programs, but we're definitely interested in moving in that direction. That is something that is one of our focus, to create as many opportunities as we can within, within that physical structure. Um, every other bank with space available in Inverness County has a certified kitchen, and yet we notice there's no certified kitchen with your banquet hall. Uh, we asked this question when the funding was originally announced, and we're told that the plans were to use the school cafeteria. Has this changed? I, we're exploring the possibility. I, I can't give you a clear answer as of yet, but we've definitely heard the comment on that. Uh, we're just not sure. We, like I said earlier, we need to go back to the drawing board and see what's possible. Uh, but we've definitely heard that. Thank you. How else would you hold a banquet? We, we, we've, we've heard the comment. We're, we're going to see how it's possible to incorporate that in the, uh, in the plans. It's an important comment. I can comment on that. Uh, and just almost, there are other, uh, organ we've had different organizations come to host uh, events in the community. And when they are aware that we are not able to provide a meal, I'm not talking just about the Conseil anywhere, that's a mandate that the group needs to be aware. So if somebody from outside comes here and there are 300 people, and we say, no, we can't provide that type of service that you're looking for, but we're very willing to have a caterer from outside come in, we do have some kitchen facilities that would meet some of the mandates. So we have to be very careful about when we say commercial kitchens and kitchen facilities. I've been around a lot of places. And to say that I've been in the commercial kitchen in most of those areas, I wouldn't say that's correct. I would say that I've seen many servicing area, servicing area as part of banquet rooms, but actual the preparation could be done elsewhere and come in. So it is it is a very uh, it's a very big issue to deal with at this point in terms of cost replanning and so forth. But I think the 
when people from outside come in and we make them aware of that, there are alternatives that they can have to have food brought in. And one of the things that caterers always ask, because I'm involved with other groups as well, is do you have a place whereby we can store our food and have a temporary hosting area before we serve? That is always an issue. If that's not an issue, then they can always come from outside. If we don't have a serving place, then that's more of an issue. So we're trying to accommodate uh, the facility space that we need for the banquet and see how we can best meet that need of food. So it's being addressed. We heard it loud and clear in the survey. And we're, we're in negotiation and looking at our plans, see where it could possibly fit in. So we're trying to mesh the two, but it's in the planning phase of what, what's the next step for us in that aspect. Any other questions? Don't test still come up at? Can you please elaborate on where you're at with the uh, library? Are there negotiations where the library? Mm -hmm. the negotiations for what? For the library. Um, the library is, uh, is, is not a simple Hi, do you want to have a library and, and yes or no? Because there, there needs to be many uh, organizations or, or many people involved and there's, it's a many step process. So at this point we've had discussions, there's been mentions of interest uh, on, on, on many sides and, and we need to further that. Um, what needs to happen is, is first we need to uh, make a plan, address it with the libraries, that needs to be approved by the board, but things need to be approved as well on the municipal side. Uh, where there's there's a, a funding component on the municipal side, uh, and so it's a it's a at a minimum it's a tri-party agreement that needs to happen, uh, and and we're we're working on it. Uh, we definitely can't say it's confirmed, but I I believe that the we we're we're optimistic. And a big a big step forward is that so many people expressed mm -hmm. the la volonté d'avoir une bibliothèque. People of Shetty Camp want that service offered. So that's a big step for the consultation process. Okay, I'm, I guess this sort of adds on to this. It's with the library. Is right now Shetty Camp doesn't have a library. Um, you can order books online, um, I think. <laughs> but there's no library that we can go to. Um, now, from what I understand, Eastern County Libraries are ready to put in a library now, this year, in Shetty Camp. And they're willing to use this building. I mean, that's maybe, you know, um, something we can look at. But, as you said earlier, there is no defined end date to when this building is going to be finished. Do you have a solution to this problem? Because there are other areas in town where we could mm -hmm. put a library right now. We're, we're in talks for uh, the long term and the short term. And so we're looking at uh, temporary things that could be implemented very quickly so that there is a library. Nothing is confirmed as of yet, but we are working on both the long term when the building is ready and between now and then, what can we do, what could be done uh, to address that uh, very quickly. Alfred Poirier, conseiller municipal. Premièrement, en question des bibliothèques, we were talking about it, you know, it's still in the early stage. You know, we had the bookmobile that was coming up to uh, St. Joseph de Wendt about two years ago. And uh, we were looking into last year and we're still looking this year. And we had different, uh, we had a few meetings with uh, Cyril and Madame Delaney. And uh, like uh, we said and we talked about, it's, uh, I think we're looking at it and uh, that's all that we can provide at this point in time. But I would have another question, you know, pertaining to the whole operation of the of the Quartier Culturel. Uh, we see that we have plans. We see that we might get money, and sometimes it's easier to get money uh, than than to have the operation after everything is built. So I personally, I don't know. I feel that the counselor and the business person 
I feel that we should have a business plan that would be coming later on stating, you know, the expenses in order to get there and also a breakdown of roughly the revenues that might be coming in. Thank you. Merci, M. Poirier. Puis, justement, c'est dans nos plans de faire un plan. Euh, c'est une des raisons pourquoi on, veut, on voulait faire cette autre étape de la consultation, c'est pour confirmer exactement ce qu'il y aura dans l'espace, pour être capable de revenir justement à la compagnie de construction, revenir à, pour finaliser les plans pour pouvoir savoir exactement allant de l'avant, on a besoin de combien de la communauté, on a besoin de combien de patrimoine canadien, combien de... et, et regarder exactement, comme vous le dites, revenus et dépenses, et comment on va arriver à atteindre ça. C'est, je dirais, c'est dans les prochaines étapes définitivement. So, very quickly, the business plan is... I'm going to say it's in the works, in the sense that this consultation needed to happen uh, in order to be able to uh, make a uh, business plan. Once we have the confirmation of what needs to be or what you want in the space, then from that point on, we can go back to the constructor and say, this wall here and that wall there and a pipe here and an a, a, a electrical outlet there, how much is it going to cost so that we can work from that and then make a business plan on how, how much we need from whom and how we're going to get it. And, and that's in the next stages for sure. Merci. Hello everyone, I'm just uh, I'm Keith McDonald, the CAO at the Municipality the County of Inverness. And in terms of the library, uh, councillors made it quite clear that the community of Shady Camp and the surrounding area would very much like additional services to, um, yeah, well, beyond online, uh, so that because of the, the uh, mobile library service is no longer uh, available in Shady Camp, so uh, certainly we're we're working with all the efforts uh, that you've heard about today in terms of the new facility. But in the short term, uh, we're working with the councillor and council to identify other po possible options uh, in the community for library services. The municipality uh, does not run library services on its own accord. It's part of a regional library service agreement with other municipalities. Uh, those other municipalities include Richmond County, uh, the town of Port Hawkesbury, the town of Mulgrave, Guysborough County, as well as the district of Sherbrooke. So each one of those municipal units uh, provide funding uh, through a formula that also uh, supports and brings in money from the province of Nova Scotia and that total budget is uh, provided to what's called the Eastern District uh, Library Services that's run out of Mulgrave and their staff, and then they uh, provide services for that overall jurisdiction. So we're working very closely with them to uh, try to work on some short-term solutions as well as what's possible for the long-term in Shetty County. question uh, in English. Uh, in light of the previous comments you made on the total cost, that two million dollars that was allocated for the construction, would it be possible to have an initial construction budget as the Conseil presented it? And the actual cost with variances so we can, can understand exactly where we stand. And in light of that, part B, what is the projected budget to finish the interior of the building? I think uh, mostly everybody in the community would like to find out about the money part, right? Where did the money go? What was it spent on? Who was the project manager? Variances on construction costs and projected costs to finish the building. Thank you. Well, the, uh, the, the actual cost, we do have a, a, uh, an accounting firm that mandates and keeps track of all the costs related to the project in terms of the last nail, wire, bolt, or whatever. That's an automatic. Uh, that's requirement as when you uh, submit grants and you receive grants, you have to provide detailed accounting reports as to where the money went. Where we, we provided you the big, the big chunk construction was 1,900,000 and some, 
we do have a breakdown. That's a summary of what was reported to us by the accounting firm, which we could certainly provide in terms of detail. So we didn't we didn't think it was necessary in terms of this meeting, but it can certainly pro be provided if you so wish for those that want to know the the. The big lines are, for example, we, we can tell you the cement cost was, we can tell you the labor cost was. We can go into certain details because of privacy concerns and so forth, but the bigger details, that's not an issue at all. Now, the projected cost of completing the project, we do have a plan, or we do have an expected budget, but again, through the consultation process, there have been some changes to that. So now, all, all of a sudden, changes may incur less cost or more cost. So part of finishing the, pro the process uh, from our partners is go back to your community, make sure that you are still aligned with what you proposed initially, and if there's been changes, promote, propose the changes in terms of drawings and so forth, so that we can better get an estimate of the cost. So if, if, we were, if you were asking, is it gonna cost 1,215,000, I can't say that. I can tell you that the cost will be significant, and it'll probably be ranging somewhere a million plus dollars depending on where we're going. So, uh, if everything is completed to our, our, our wish, it'll probably be as much as what we just spent. So you're looking at probably around two million. If you're looking at cutting back on some things and maybe completing them at different times, then it will vary. But I, I hate to give you a specific number because there are changes now occurring because of some of the consultation that's been occurring, but I can certainly tell you that to complete the project as we see, you're certainly talking over a million dollars. I can guarantee you that. But there's a lot of things that need to be finished off, and then things will change as consultation happens. But through our discussion, that's why we are working with our partners to see what costs we'll incur based on what we propose initially. If that's, if we're still in action, if this is still the plan, then they can rule it. And of course, time adds cost, of course. Cost of materials change and so forth. So when we talk to our possible building company or person that will take in charge of that, they say, well, if you if you ask us the same quote next year, it'll change. If you tell me a quote now, I can tell you what it'll be. But in six months, it'll change. Next six months, it's gonna change. And of course, it doesn't change to go down, it usually changes to go up. But that's the ballpark that we're looking at in terms of but before we can put that final estimate, we need to know exactly what's going to be done to finish the project for what we want it to be. And our partners are asking the same question. Their partners uh, are discussing. The first part of my question was about deposits that have already been incurred. Yeah, we have that. Yeah. But is it possible to know what it is that one? Well, we can certainly ask the building company that question. In total, it was two million fourteen thousand six hundred and nine dollars. So just over two million dollars, and, and of that, uh, there's one million nine hundred and eighty-two thousand. So ninety-eight point five percent of that budget of that two million was construction costs, and then the rest, the one and a half percent, is management costs, accounting costs, and things like that. So of the um, two million fourteen thousand, there was one million nine hundred and eighty-two thousand in construction, eleven thousand in management cost, and twenty-one thousand in financing and, and accounting cost. Was that pretty close to what was budgeted? I, it was slightly over, but it was pretty close. Yeah. Just for curiosity, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Almost two million. How much did already come from the community? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. How much what? So for those two million dollars that were spent on the construction, how much did it come from the community already? Dans qui provient de la communauté, il y avait du conseil scolaire acadien provincial, donc en nature, en service, 475 000 dollars et autres revenus de la communauté, que ce soit des levées de fonds, que ce soit des, des spectacles bénéfices ou, ou autres, ou des dons, c'était 11 000 dollars. Donc au total, 486 000 environ là, qui viennent de la communauté. Le reste, ça vient des gouvernements euh, provinciaux, fédéraux et municipaux. Could you translate that? Yes. So of the uh, two million. There was 11,100 that came from the community, from fundraising or, or donations. Uh, the school board gave in, in kind, in services, 
475,000, so they, they paid for, uh, for example, some plumbing and, and things like that. Uh, so 475,000 plus the 11,000 that came from the donations of the community, that makes 486,000 that came directly from the community, and the rest came from the three levels of government in the community, uh, municipal, sorry, uh, provincial and federal government. We'll come back to both of you here in front. Yeah, right. um, I want to commend everybody that's been working on this for so long. Um, one of the things I think what we all realize in this room is, and we've said it here a number of times, is that more people add ideas and we think about what we're doing. And um, in this day and age with climate change, I was really interested to find out what environmental um, aspects are going to be added to this building, whether or not it's solar or whatever. Um, the, the other part uh, to my comment is, um, with this meeting, it, uh, we saw it only online. We didn't see it spread out throughout the community, and there's been a number of people that have asked, can we participate in the planning of this? Can, can citizens come together and make this a, a better, uh, you know, more cohesive um, plan and we want to do that so we'd like to find out how you as the committee are going to move forward with that thank you uh, first of all thanks for the question and, and thanks for your your first comments as far as the uh, environmental uh, considerations we've heard that in the survey as well uh, it is something that we will take under consideration uh, and, and we'll definitely look at how we can uh, make it as, as green as possible um, and as far as uh, the invitations and all this there were uh, interviews on the community radio station I believe there was a uh, something in a uh, newspaper as well uh, anyways we, we've tried to spread it as, as far and wide as, as possible uh, it was indeed uh, Facebook is, is the, the main element and, and that is the also the main element that we invite you uh, to follow. As I mentioned earlier, the Conseil des Arts uh, will make at least one post per month to keep you up to date. And, and so I invite you to like that page and, and, and visit it often. But one of the questions that we have for you in the hallway is also about communications. We want to know how you want to hear from us and we want to know uh, what we can do to communi communicate better with the community. So I invite you to participate in that. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that as soon as we're done with the uh, question period. But uh, yeah, there's, that's one of the elements that we want to hear about. Thank you. Uh, we're lucky that there's the agreement with the school board, Entente Scolaire Communautaire, and so the overhead and, and many, many of the main expenses are, are paid by the school board, uh, and so we would be able to run it at minimum staff. Of course, there's always the question of uh, the uh, events that are taking place. So if there's a banquet with 200 people, I can't serve that myself. I'm sure you, you would like to, and, and I'm sure you couldn't do it either by yourself. So the, the, the main key here, the, the, the main element that's uh, fantastic is that our expenses, as far as staffing goes, is directly related to our revenues. So when you rent the hall, you have people that come in and work it and whatnot. So our, our overhead costs are very, very low. And uh, so that's that's the main element. There would be uh, the executive director that would run that. And depending on how busy and how quick it revs up to be busy, there might be someone hired. And that was in the, uh, the plan that I had made originally when I first came on board. Uh, so the executive director, and uh, when it revs up, there could be someone taking care of all the logistics of reserving the hall or renting the hall to people uh, and, and taking care of the programming. And then there's a third person that would be taking care of the, the cleaning and, and whatnot uh, of, of the spaces. But that's what's planned at the moment. And like I said, the moment we have a revenue, we can make that expense. So we, we're not running a deficit from, from uh, renting those spaces. So that's a very positive thing. That's covered by the school board. 
Yeah. So it makes for a very, very early break even point in the budget. And, and that's, that's an element that's been very attractive to our partners. Because often, if there are all kinds of costs that the, or, that the association is responsible for, it can be a deal breaker. Because it just makes it sometimes you can't meet those uh, expenses. The school board has graciously uh, contributed to the project, or is still interested in contributing to the project. But because they're also a partner, we also have to be considerate about what the needs are and how we can operate to also um, not necessarily minimize the expenses, but use the building efficiently so that we're not, so we're using the money that's attributed to the handling of the building as efficiently as we can. But that's a big partner for us in terms of long term. It doesn't look maybe that significant now, but over the next 10 years, it's a significant contribution from the school board. So to have that support is great. And uh, it is really pushing us to move forward with the project. And our partners, that when, we, when they sit at the table and see that that partner is already committed to that, wow, that means a lot to them as well. So it speaks well to the community, it speaks well to the people involved with the organization, with the CSAP. And it's, it's, it's great to have such a partner in there that we can count on. So all the partners are interested in seeing that done. And again, this is always uh, when we about cost. It's a cost that we can certainly uh, live with. But before I go to you at the back, I'm sorry. There's Madame ici en rouge qui avait aussi levé la main. She's been asking for a while. La même question. No, from, from the get-go, we've been wanting to be self-sufficient. Yes. So, back to you. I'm slightly confused. I just, well, I ask your patience in explaining this to me because it's a community um, facility, but it's a school building. Mm -hmm. So, the dichotomies there, I'm not, I'm not sure how that's how that works if it's for the community but it's a school building the school buildings uh, mandates will apply yes there's there's a school community agreement that's signed so uh, that it can be used by the community as well okay are we able to perhaps see that at some point or have a general review or a recap of it I'm, I'm not sure I, I honestly, I, I, I understand the question. Uh, I don't know that we have all the details and, and we weren't prepared to do that today. Um, I'll invite you to come see me after and we can talk a bit more in detail about what those, because those agreements exist throughout the province. It's not just in Shadikant. The school board is very, the French school board is very good with the community that, that uh, sends kids to their schools. And, and we can talk a bit more about that later, you and I, if you, if you don't mind. I, I, can, I can also add on to that. If you know the bill, for example, Academy Goy, they're under a similar agreement with the school board. They operate themselves, they're their own group, they pay for certain things, we CSAP pays for other things, so it's mutually, it's between the group and the CSAP to discuss the details, but as soon as you become part of the building, there are certain things we need to respect in terms of either school closures or certain things like that, but individual groups that want to use the school facility and negotiate with the with the school board that's been like that for uh, for the province but there's general mandates as how it operates so we can certainly go over some of the basic principles but the details varies with group per group avec des mandats précis, puis aller chercher les gens de la communauté, selon le, le comité, l'activité ou l'aspect du centre, ou euh, comme par rapport à, à l'environnement, ça pourrait être un mm -hmm. comité, mais on, nous autres, on a euh, le marché des fermiers, on n'est jamais consulté directement en tant que groupe, marché oui. des fermiers, exposant. Puis je pense qu'il y a beaucoup de gens qui, qui partent toutes sortes de rumeurs d'un bord de l'autre. Moi, j'arrive ici, j'ai plusieurs surprises que je pensais que j'avais encore le temps 
qu'on en discute, puis que j'avais l'intention de donner mon nom pour être sur un comité là-dessus. Il n'y en a pas, ça. on dirait que c'est juste le comité, le conseil qui prend les décisions, puis après ce qu'ils reçoivent tout. Mais il y a plein de... de, de si on n'a pas des gens qui, qui viennent de la communauté directement, dès le début, parce qu'on planifie les choses, l'implication de la communauté, vous allez peut-être la perdre tant qu'il n'y en a pas mieux. J'entends votre commentaire et j'apprécie votre commentaire. Euh, une des questions, puis c'est ressorti très, très clairement dans les, dans les sondages, toute la question de faire vivre les l'édifice. Donc, présentement, on est en train de se questionner beaucoup sur ça, pas parce qu'on, dans le sens où on veut, on veut, on se questionne, où on veut faire de la meilleure manière possible. Donc, l'idée des, des comités, c'est définitivement quelque chose qu'on explore à ce point-ci. Les questions dans le corridor portent beaucoup sur comment le faire vivre. Euh, je vous invite à faire part de ce commentaire-là sur les posters à l'extérieur. Je, je, je vais arriver là-dessus sur comment ça fonctionne très bientôt. Mais les, le, le comment faire vivre l'édifice, c'est une de nos grandes, euh, grandes préoccupations à ce point-ci. Et l'idée des comités pour en être une bonne. Mais clairement, il doit y avoir une, un lien entre le Conseil des arts et la communauté pour pouvoir le faire vivre de la meilleure manière possible. J'entends très bien votre commentaire, c'est noté. Je vous remercie. Oh, yes. Um, so the, the question was about potential committees, many committees uh, brought forward for uh, the activities and, and what's done. And my answer was that we've, we've heard many comments, at, uh, as I mentioned earlier, on how to, um, how to use the building better and how to um, make it live, how to, the programming of the... So there's a lot of questions about that, uh, that were still unanswered uh, and, and that were... Uh, we're thinking about and the posters in the hallway that we'll get to in a minute are a lot about that how you know other than having a library what do you guys want to do with that library what goes inside and the question of how do we consult the community going forward and 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 for that programming is is a big question that we still have and uh we we're not we haven't finished the discussion on that but uh, i i hear the comment and, and it's noted and, and the idea of committees is definitely one that we will explore That was my, my answer. Oui, Nicole. Yeah, I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Uh, I highly commend the CSIP for being so on board with this and it, it makes the, the expenses and everything much more uh, feasible. And they've all, they'll, they've, it's already permitted for the Acadie Groy to become a success as it's, it's in the school, and it, it, you know, it, if not for that, we may not have that service. So I think it's a great idea that the CSRB is able to do that, and I believe it's key to the success of this endeavor. Ici, autant qu'ailleurs en province, les ententes scolaires communautaires sont... They, they're, they're all, those agreements are always win-win situations, and, and yes. it's appreciated by the community. Oui, je trouve yeah. c'est magnifique. Merci beaucoup. I feel it's now time because I, I, I feel like a broken record and we'll get to the posters in the hall and we'll get to the posters in the hall. Let, let's get to them. How's that? <laughs> um, so this is the other part of the consultation where you get to participate, but you participate in, in your own way. There are six posters in the hallway and above each of those posters is a, a sheet of color on which is there's a question printed. The questions are summarized on the on the board because we couldn't put them all in, in length. But the first one is, as far as the cafe goes, um, what would you like to see in it as far as services, as far as materials, as far as, as activities, as far as programming? Be as, as generous as you can and, and let us know uh, what you'd like to find inside that cafe. Donc pour le café, qu'est-ce que vous aimeriez y retrouver? Uh, Puis quand je dis qu'est-ce que vous aimeriez y retrouver, je parle autant en termes de services, de produits que d'activités. Same thing about the library. That's, that's another question. Uh, so what would you like us to do with that library, and, and I already know one answer, and that's books. But what else, right? Donc pour la bibliothèque, même chose, on sait qu'il y aura des livres, mais quelles sont les autres choses que vous aimeriez retrouver à l'intérieur de cette euh, bibliothèque-là? Troisièmement, and, and I, that goes back to what Cyril was saying at the very beginning. The, the, keep in mind what the mandate of the um, 
Conseil des Arts is, um, and, and tell us what kind of activities could or should be organized for the community by the Conseil des Arts inside that brand new space that we will have. Donc, en termes de programmation, au-delà des, des, des fenêtres puis du béton, euh, dans cet espace-là, quelles sont les activités? Quelle est la programmation que vous aimeriez retrouver? Puis, aller aussi loin que vous le voulez, dans le comment aussi. Euh, et c'est là où, par exemple, l'idée des comités pourrait revenir. Euh, soyez aussi, euh, aussi large que vous le voulez. Um, the fourth question. In, in addition, I, I've mentioned that the, uh, Conse the uh, Conseil des Arts is in, um, committed to making one Facebook post per month to let you know of the progress of the project. What else do you want for communications? What, how else should we communicate with you? Uh, donc, pour les communications, la quatrième question, uh, on a déjà mentionné que le Conseil des Arts allait communiquer par un, via un post Facebook une fois par mois. La question est, Quoi d'autre vous aimeriez voir? Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pour mieux communiquer avec la communauté, mais aussi pour recevoir de la communauté? Donc, communication, communication not just in one way, in, in both ways, right? How can you, how do you want to be able to communicate with us as much as how you want to be communicated, communicated with? Um, fifth question, I've mentioned it earlier, many, many comments uh, were said about the uh, art space whether it's presentation, whether it's creation, uh, and, and, and in, in many forms. Um, what would you like to see in there, and for whom? Tell us who we should gear that space uh, towards. Donc pour l'espace artistique, il y a eu plusieurs commentaires, autant au niveau de la création qu'au niveau de la présentation. Uh, donc dites-nous ce que vous aimeriez qu'on y fasse, uh, quel genre d'activité ou, ou quel genre de, de, de d'œuvre d'art ou quel genre de forme d'art vous aimeriez, mais aussi dites-nous euh, pour qui on devrait, euh, qui devrait être la clientèle ciblée pour cet espace-là. Et la sixième, et c'est celle que moi je préfère toujours, c'est le parking d'idées. Donc tout ce qui n'a pas été discuté, tout ce que vous n'avez pas entendu, toutes les questions non répondues, toutes les idées aussi folles qu'elles puissent être, n'hésitez pas. Puis là aussi, c'est anonyme, on ne saura pas qui ce qu'il l'a écrit. Fait que, écrivez toutes vos folies sur le parking, ça va nous faire plaisir. So the last one is the ideas parking lot. Be as crazy as you want. Tell us all the comments that you may have, all the ideas that have not yet been discussed, all the questions that you may have, and, and, and please let us know of, of anything that uh, comes to mind as far as the uh, quartier culturel goes. How do we do it? Um, so on the table, uh, there's a table in the hallway. You'll see the six big white posters with the questions above. There's a table in the hallway. You have markers, sharpies, masking tape, paper, uh, colored paper. You have post-it galores and, and, and what's not on, ta on the table, there's a, about twice as much in my, uh, in my car, in, the, in my bag. So feel free, take a post-it, walk around, write stuff, stick it on there, or just take the marker. I'll get to your question in just a minute. Um, take marker and write directly on the poster if you'd like. There's just a couple of rules that I'll give you. Um, first of all, if you like someone's idea, feel free to make a check mark, a little heart, a little plus, whichever. Find a way to let us know that you like that idea. Sort of a, you know, I'm adding a vote here because I think that idea is great. If you don't like someone's idea, let's be respectful. Don't cross it out. Write your idea next to it or, or draw an arrow and tell me why you don't like that idea. Same thing, if, if an idea makes you think of another idea, feel free to draw an arrow and add to it, add to the conversation. It's a physical conversation. And it's, it's a poster for a reason. If you're more inclined to draw than to write, feel free to draw. You know, express yourself and... Just, just don't go drawing on the walls. <laughs> yeah, just don't go drawing on the walls. But if you, if you need more of those giant post-its to write more, I have tons of them. Don't, don't be... Gênez-vous um, pas. Vous avez donc les crayons, les post-its. Vous écrivez partout là-dessus. Uh, je vais juste répéter les règles très rapidement. Si vous avez une idée que vous aimez, faites un crochet, un petit cœur, un petit plus. Trouvez un moyen de voter pour que je sache que vous aimez l'idée, soyons respectueux. Par contre, si vous n'aimez pas l'idée, n'allez pas la barrer. Vous faites une flèche, vous les inscrivez au bout de cette flèche-là pourquoi vous n'aimez pas l'idée. Ou même si c'est une idée qui vous fait penser à une autre idée, n'hésitez pas à lier vos idées ensemble avec une flèche euh, et, et les relier. Il euh, y a des gens qui s'expriment bien avec des mots, il y en a qui euh, s'expriment mieux avec des dessins. It could also be the lyrics of a new song if you want, right? Be as creative as you want, feel free, let yourself go. 
Um, just making sure I didn't forget anything. I think I'm good. You're, you had a quick question? What I'll invite you to do, if you haven't taken the presentation, uh, the paper copy, I'll invite you to take them. The last slide, which is on there, um, has our full email address. My address is martin at martintebergeconsultant.ca. Feel free to send me an email or to call me up. I will be more than happy to discuss that with you if it's a question of time uh, or, or any for any reason. If, if you go to bed tomorrow and you wake up uh, the day after with an idea, please do call me uh, or send me an email. I will be more than happy to do that. Uh, if, if for environmental reason you don't want to take the presentation, take a picture of that slide right there and do the same. Send me an email. I'll be more than happy. Remember, this is recorded, so we, we could also post it on the Facebook page so that people can go back to hear the presentation part of the, the day. Alors, ça conclut la portion assis. And on va pas. And now we'll be in the doors of the uh, new section waiting. So if somebody wants to come and visit, you can visit. I'll remain there until people have all gone. I'd just like to thank you, everybody, for your presence and for participating in this. Thank you.